Have you ever noticed that in previous videos, my hair is either clean and looks nice or tied up in a ponytail? So if you've seen the previous video, you already know that we're publishing a game that's not developed by us and that game is Monster Prom. So naturally, because I like video editing, I made the teaser trailer for the game that's up on our channel and you can go check it out. Link, description, you got this. But the thing is with trailers, things are moving so fast that you don't get to appreciate or understand how shots were made. So I figured I should make this video explaining how I made the teaser trailer for Monster Prom. So the first thing we had to do for the video was to make a list of things that we Want to show in the video and on that list we had things like the game's locations that you can visit, character introductions, a collection of weird events, some secret endings and overall the art of the game. Oh also like 95% of art that you see in the video is made by a guy called Arthur Teen and personally I freaking love it. So we started writing the script that the voice actor would read out. We made a list where we put in every line from the video and next to it I tried to lay down what would be on the screen and now you're looking at my screen. And this is the first thing that shows up in the video is the four main characters and introducing the narrator which is Principal Giant Spider voiced by Prost. This is how the intro shot was laid down. I have the playable characters here at quite a high resolution so I can scale them up and they still look good. So what I did was I moved the characters close to each other so it seems like it's a very close shot. And then I zoomed out the camera while also moving the characters away from each other to create space for the shadow that shows up in the background showing Principal Giant Spider. Now if you actually open the shadow composition it looks like this. It's just a weird shape and we added some weird wiggling to the spider hands I think they are to make them look extra creepy. This is all blurred up and a single color and it looks good like that. The next shot was the map location, showing all the locations that you can visit in the game. Luckily, it was made in such a way that I could easily toggle on and off various areas of the map. So I did that while also throwing in this sign uh, that shows all the locations and highlighting them when the camera zooms in into that specific section. To make it a little bit more interesting and give the viewer something to look at aside from just the map graphics. Next up was the bathroom scene and for this one I just had the clean background of the bathroom and I had to make it look like it's on fire, underwater and filled with blood. So the way I did that was by using this fire asset that I had laying around and the secret to this is to sell the effect that the bathroom is actually on fire and you do that by adding some very small subtle effects. One of them is actually coloring the background orange, another one is actually making the background wiggle to create the heat waves effect of the fire and then if you just have the fire asset there it doesn't really look convincing so the secret to tying the whole effect together is to add some flying embers and when you put the whole thing together it looks like this and it's very convincing so job well done moving on the bathroom being underwater now this one is slightly easier you do the same thing you color the background blue you add that ripple effect to create the waves you throw in some water bubbles to make it clear that you're underwater however the secret sauce to making a scene look like it's underwater is to add this light ca caustic I'm not sure how you pronounce this but these wiggly lines on the background and also make them wiggle and then when you put the whole thing together it actually looks like you're underwater. Next up for the blood effect I just used some uh, blood splatters. It's actually white ink that I colored red but I really like how they're animated and they actually splatter on a surface and pretty much looks like blood. So I just make that red and it looks pretty convincing. Now after this the narrator makes a joke of how clean the bathrooms are and we show the bathroom from a different perspective and I add a little bit of shine on the mirror and then like a sparkle on the sinks and check it out the shine on the mirror is just a white mask that's animated to pass by and it looks pretty okay but the secret to making it look really good is to add some outer glow to it that's really powerful and exaggerated and that sells the effect of something really shining you can almost hear it in your head going like Shing! super clean Next up we have a shot with a poster showing how safe the high school is and it's just an image of a poster on a brick background and it stays on the screen for like two or three seconds and it's quite boring to look at it. Like one thing that I could do is slowly zoom in but even then it's still boring. So I figured what I could do is have some really scaled up blur characters walk around and pass in front of the camera and use one of those characters passing by to zoom into the poster even further to add a little bit more movement. So when you do that it looks something like this. Next up we have a shot with the monster, yeah, the monster Slayer and there's not much to talk about uh, in this shot because it's very simple. Uh, it's just one thing, if you look at Liam's glasses, the outlines are missing and then they appear once he gets scared. So yeah, go yell about that in the comments. 
After this shot, we have a little joke with the Monster Slayer on the roller coaster. And this was a fairly easy shot. The only problem was I wanted to add some movements to the characters in the roller coaster, and the way they were drawn originally is like this. So I couldn't really move them because it would be really obvious. So I had to get in and manually add the missing part so I can animate these two characters slightly moving, creating the effect of velocity. And in order to sell the effect of speed even further, I made the roller coaster vibrate a little bit. And because the roller coaster and the support pillar are on the same layer, both of them are vibrating, which makes no sense. So please, if you're an artist and you're watching this, don't merge your layers. Keep them separate. You're gonna make an animator's life so much easier and he's gonna love you forever in some weird ways, but still, you get the point. Next up, the cult scene. Uh, here's the thing. Originally, the actual cult ending looks like this. I figured it's a bit too revealing for a teaser trailer, so what we did was we covered her butt, just like that. And I hope you never noticed the difference. But yeah, because this, again, was not on separate layers, we had to do this manually, and it was a little bit tricky, but we managed, and I think it looks pretty good if you don't look really close. So you also have these cultists in the background, and I was able to animate them to basically move a little bit and create some depth to the scene while also adding this rotating pentagram at the top. You just google pentagram, you go to images, I think I actually used this one, and you animate it to rotate a little bit and then you just squish the out of it and it looks like it's in perspective and it looks really good. Also added some pink mist at the bottom to make it even more mysterious and cult-y. And my favorite thing about this shot is the way I transition into it. I made this fisheye lens uh, transition effect and when you play it, it looks really interesting. Oh, also I recorded my voice for this shot and I reversed it and added some echo onto it to make it sound very culty. And it ended up sounding like this. And then finally we have the outro animation with the logo. Now before we came on board the logo looked like this uh, and then we were not super happy with it so we decided we want to change the logo and what we landed on was this which is the new design with the two monster hands holding each other. So for this I took the logo and I broke it down into individual pieces so I can animate every single asset separately even these tiny wings here and then I figured we need a way to introduce the logo in a natural way so the viewers attention naturally goes where the logo will appear. And the way we do that is with this super awesome hands animation made by Yona, who was also featured in a previous video. She did a really cool job on these hands. They morph faster and faster as they get closer to each other. So whatever you have on screen, like be it gameplay footage or whatever else, the arms gradually fade in and they direct your eyes to where the logo will appear. And it creates this shockwave that fills the screen with the background. And I added this little uh, shaking effect so it sells the impact of two stone hands basically grasping each other. Then they scale down a little bit and the base of the logo shows up while also having some thunders in the background. Those lighting strikes in the background are actually some animations I made many many years ago, uh, 2012. And I figured I could actually reuse those because they kind of fit this uh, scenario. And some bats flying away, just a simple animation loop that I made into a particle system and then I made them spawn when the logo shows up. So it makes the impact even more powerful. So the lightning hits and the logo text shows up and I try to animate every single piece of the logo including these uh, two little wings that kind of show up from behind the hands. And that's about it. After this the characters show up and the game's info appears on screen synced with the voice acting telling you when the game is gonna come out and all that. And after the logo shot which is called an end card by the way I wanted to encourage the viewer to press the wishlist button on Steam. So the way I did that is I took a screenshot of the game's Steam page and then where the trailer would go normally on the Steam page I put in the logo logo animation and then I animated a tiny cursor to go over the wishlist button and click it and this is all done manually and also the secret to making this look like a screen is to add a little grid that makes it look like you can see the pixels and then create a 3d camera so it ends up looking like this and turn on depth of field so the edges of the screen get blurred a little bit and this creates this very cool screen effect that I like to overuse in all the move or die trailers. So that was it for video editing. Now I want to focus a little bit on the audio side of things because that's usually a part that's overseen and it's not considered as important as the visuals. And personally, I think 
that's not the case because I really like sound design. So this is how the audio for the trailer looks like and everything that's pink is the voice acting and then these blue tracks are the songs that play in the background and everything green is a sound effect. Now for voice acting I got this long recording with all the takes for the video including some different voices and some various takes and then I had to cut all of this down and time it just right so it sounds correct and the final piece looked like this. Up notch institution with lots of locations to visit. And then I added some effects and a little bit of reverb to make the voice sound more spidery because the voice is coming from principal giant spider. This is what we get. Top notch institution with lots of locations to visit. Eh? Also for the very last voice I had a little problem when Christina, the female voice actor at the end of the video said welcome to Monster Prom, the way she said it was with an upward curve so she said it like welcome to Monster Prom and it sounded like this. Welcome to Monster Prom. The and that kind of sounds off, especially when you hear it for the first time. So I had to go in and look for a different take and change the pitch very slightly to fix that upwards curve and bring it to a more flat one. I ended up with this. Welcome to Monster Prom, the first mul- And if you listen really closely, you can hear that there's a cut there, but I think overall it sounds better like this. So I added in all the voice acting and next up was landing on a song for the video. At the very end, when the game logo shows up, we use the song written by Messer which is the band whose uh, songs we also use in-game. And I think it fits the ending and the overall uh, mood of the game. But for the actual video, I used a very cool tool that I recently stumbled upon called Filmstro. And what Filmstro allows you to do is to pick a song and it gives you three sliders that you can control the song with. A momentum one, depth and power. And you can change these sliders in real time while you watch the video to make the music sound exactly how you need it to sound. Now I'm gonna play the song I made for the trailer and keep your eyes on those sliders. So yeah, it's super cool to be able to do that and that's how I made the music for the entire video. Now the green parts are sound effects and sound effects are really close to my heart because they bring so much life to the trailer. And just to give you an example, I'm gonna play a small part of the video with just the sound effects. No music and no voice. Check this out. And I think that's so cool that I exported the video with just the sound effects and I uploaded it separately. And if you want to see more, you can watch the whole trailer with just the sound effects at this link. You can also find it in the description. I, I just, it, they're cool. Okay, I like them. I like sound effects. Shut up. And that's it. That's how I made the Monster Prom trailer. And it was a lot of work. I think it took me around three days, mostly because the whole trailer is made from still images, paintings, Photoshop files, and quite a lot of effects. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And I'm hoping I did a good enough job with this to convince you to wishlist the game on Steam and hopefully buy it when it comes out. Thank you for sticking around and watching the whole video. And uh, do I hear a new outro animation? Huh? Yeah. <sighs>